It's now against the law to graduate high school in Texas without some practical instruction in personal finance. Canada has no such laws, but we do have a stand-up comic. James Cunningham travels to high schools across the country to talk about managing money. Sunday producer Natasha Sweeney tagged along to see if students are getting the message behind the jokes. As a group, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. This is called the How Broke Is Your Butt Test, all right? Clap if you've ever considered Kraft Dinner as one of the four major food groups. Make some noise. Is that yes, okay? Okay? Or samosa, samosa, five for a dollar. Five for, yeah, broke guys. Like high five, yes. James Cunningham is a man on a financial mission. He set out to teach high school students how to manage their money. His arsenal? A lot of jokes and a bit of cash. So I'm going to ask for volunteers over the course of the next four. Okay, relax. <laughs> That's broke person number two. You guys should meet. This is good. She's like, oh my God, it's me. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask for volunteers. You volunteer. You give me like two minutes of your time, either out there in the, in the, in the crowd or up here on stage. I'm going to give you $5. How's that? $5 for volunteer. That's better. Come on. That's, is that, is that, yeah? See? His 45-minute funny money show is an unconventional lecture about the basics of why spending and saving. I love you, Grandma! It's touring all over Canada, giving students some simple tips for the real world that's right around the corner. Clap if you're going to go to college or university and you're going to have to borrow money to make that happen. OSAP loans, student loans. And finally, clap if you will admit, because we're all friends here, that mom and dad is your number one primary source of income. Make some noise. Is that okay? Put your hand up if you've ever gone over on your cell phone plan. Well, look all the hands up. You've got a bigger bill than you were expecting. Okay? That's one example of these companies making loads and loads of money. You can put your hands up. Mo loads and loads of money off you. An investment, on the other hand, is... Cunningham and his sponsors have teamed up to make videos like this one. A mutual fund. Money maker. A savings bond. Money maker. A high interest savings account. Money maker. And they take his free funny money tour to 160 schools across Canada every year. I am not a financial expert. Um, and my goal is to, to get these students to ask the questions. It's to spark the questions and spark the interest. And if I can do that through my humor, um, then I've, I've done a great thing. How much money, think about this number, how much money did people in your age group between 16 and 20 last year all over North America, Canada and the US, how much money did you guys spend as a group last year? Shout some numbers out, what do you think? With a, one billion, one billion dollars, a billion, that's... Nine billion, nine billion, okay, you guys are, what, t 100 million, okay, a billion, we've got 40 something, okay, good, okay. The actual stat, the actual stat. Students in your age, last year, students in your age group, you collectively spent, all together, you spent $100 billion last year. 100, <laughs> ooh, ah, that's a lot of money. Now you're saying, James, that's a lot of money, okay, but now really, that's not the problem, okay. The problem is how much money, you, well, you spent, you spent 100 billion, how much money did you earn last year? Part-time jobs, $8. Yeah. Part-time job, full-time jobs, investment income. How much money did people your age earn? What do you think, what do you think? You spent 100, you earned 5.6. How would you describe student spending behavior? Student spending behavior, all right. Uh, insane, out of control, nuts. Pick a word. Students this age, and this is why I really um, have a, a, an affinity for this age group, is because they are uh, they are the worst at managing their money. They are probably the wealthiest generation of 16 to 22 year olds ever to exist, and yet they are the worst at managing their money. Enter Cunningham's first lesson, know your flow. Trina, where are you off to school next year? Algonquin College. Algonquin College, good school. Ah, okay, <laughs> now, how much will you as a first year student be spending on your basic school supplies from day one to final exam over the course of one full year, what do you think? Uh, $1,000? $1,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. Okay. Now, the most common answer I get across the country, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Now, the lowest answer I ever got, ever, was $23. And this guy was sure. He's like, sir, I'll tell you right now, 23 bucks, I have a plan. I'm like, what's your plan? He's like, I plan to shoplift. I'm like, okay, that's a bad plan. That's a bad plan. Don't, don't do that plan. That's not a good plan. But the point is, you said $1,000. That's way off average. But the question I have for you, do you really know how much you're going to spend on school supplies? No. Nope. That's all I want to know. Thank you. Enjoy your five bucks. How easy was that? How easy was that? See? Watching millennials, which are students that have been sort of born um, post-90s, essentially, they are the ones that don't have any, any concept of what a recession. This is the first recession these students have been through. This is the first harsh economic times they've known. 
And until then, you know, you're dealing with a generation that is used to 24-7 access, full online, of any information around the world they can get, uh, a cell phone, which they can call around the world, and money that just magically comes. Because most parents now uh, don't have time, which means that they replace time with what? Money. Ladies, show me yours. Let me see some girls' wads. The girls, oh, that is awesome. Look at that blue one. That is so fantastic. That's, oh, look at that. Oh, we've got some awesome wallets. Okay. What's your name? Girl in the blue, what's your name? Jen. Nice to meet you, Jen. Can I just borrow There's a dollar for you. One, okay, you have what's called the brick. Look at this wall. You see this wall? It is the size of a brick. Here's Cunningham's lesson number two. Know what you owe. This wallet weighs nine pounds. I'm not kidding. If someone tried to rob Jen of her wallet, she could defend herself using this wallet. They'd be like, give me your wallet, back off, <laughs> concussion. What I want you to have is I want you to have a simple, easy to understand wallet. Two major cards, zero merchant cards, one or two bank or ATM cards, and that's about it, my friends. Keep it simple. But many young Canadians do in fact have heavy, complicated wallets. Six in 10 report they currently have some debt. Most common, you guessed it, credit cards. What you want to do is this, okay? Get the credit card. Get the credit card from credit card from your bank or credit union, okay? Nice student card, nice low interest rate, nice low limits. And what you do is this: you buy the shoes. That's fine. <gasps> pay the money back as fast as you possibly can before you buy the clothes. Then <gasps> pay the money back as fast as you possibly can before you buy the hats. Then <gasps> pay the money back. Then buy a computer. Then <gasps> pay the money back. Pay him back as fast as you possibly can because now what you're showing is you can handle the responsibility of paying money back, which means you're building your credit score. Parents, I think parents grow up and they tell us, stay out of debt, don't get yourself in debt. We're always going to have debt, but manage the debt, right. control it. Investing in your education, that's phenomenal debt. I mean, buying something that's going to get you a return is, is phenomenal. So going into debt for your education, okay, I can understand that. Going into debt to buy a house, okay, I get that. Going into debt to buy a shirt or a computer or you know, a pair of shoes, eh, unless they're really good shoes. They're really good shoes. Sometimes you got <laughs> you to bling it out. <laughs> Simple advice, sure, but most students don't know the basics. In fact, only 23% of young Canadians have ever taken a course in personal finance. Parents think they're being taught in schools, and schools think that they're learning at home. And so in the middle, there's this big, this is big gap. As far as managing your money, you don't learn much in school. I mean, you have like the, the business courses, such as like international business and business management, but there's no like course about economics or things like that, where you learn how to manage your money or what to do with your money. Cunningham's third and final lesson to high school students, what to do with a little bit of money every week. Invest your dough. Investing is not complex. Investing means this. It's why the rich get richer and the rest of us get poorer. My grandfather told me that years ago. He said, James, I'll tell you how the world works. There's two kinds of people. There's these rich guys that get richer and richer and richer. And there's the rest of us. We just get poorer and poorer and poorer. It's not fair. It's not fair. The thing is, there's one stupid thing that these rich guys know the rest of us never learn. And that is, it's not the money you have or how much money you make. It's what you do with the money that you do have that makes the difference over the long term. This is Angie. Angie's very intense. She freaks me out. But the point is, <laughs> she's smart. Because what she does is she does her budget. And she realizes that in her budget map, she can see that, you know what, if I move a couple things around here, I can take 20 bucks a week and take it from a money loser and put it into a money maker. So would you believe that her 20 bucks a week is not $48,000? Her 20 bucks a week is $1,097,368. So if you start to budget your money, if you start to organize and control your debt, and you start to buy things that make you money as opposed to lose you money, you, my friends, are going to be in very good financial shape. How much will it cost you, he said 1000 to operate that car for one year, what do you think? I'd probably say around two grand. Two grand, he's 1000 2000 not bad answers, not bad answers. Getting students to look at money in a smart, savvy way is really Cunningham's only goal. And he's hoping these students will keep laughing all the way to the bank. Parking tickets, parking uh, speeding tickets, can it even go that fast? Um, you get Chewbacca in there, Chewbacca, hyperdrive. <laughs> you could do that, do that? That's awesome. This whole school speaks Chewbacca. This is awesome. Oh, awesome. Wait, a whole conversation there. A whole conversation. That is one way to get young people, anybody, to really think a little more closely about their money. I wish I had him at our school.